Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 348. I was uh, white here and kicked off with e4, and my opponent played e5. And I decided here to play uh, f4, the famous uh, King's Gambit. This is an opening that's uh, uh, not that great for white, but it leads to interesting play. It, it basically gives uh, even chances, so you're somehow giving up the, the opening advantage a little bit when you play an opening like this. But uh, it also leads to a very interesting and complicated tactical position, so if you enjoy that kind of play, uh, it, it can be a fun opening to learn. And um, it's not like it's losing or anything. You usually get your pawn back or get sufficient compensation. So um, F4. I used to play this opening. Actually, I've even played it in some over-the-board games, but uh, not for a while. So I'm, I'm getting back into it. I'm a little bit rusty here. Uh, bishop to c5 is um, the second choice, you can see, after taking. That's the king's gambit accepted. Bishop c5 is a normal way of declining the gambit. And now it's a mistake to take the pawn here because of, uh, because of the queen coming out with the devastating check. If you block with g3, this is just a typical tactic. The queen comes over here with check and uh, forks the king and the rook. So uh, definitely you have to be aware in these openings from the get-go very tactically sharp. So after uh, bishop to uh, c5, the normal move is move. The normal move is knight to c, knight to f3, <clears throat> blocking out these squares um, so the queen can't come out and deliver that check. And then my opponent plays d6, also the normal move here. And now um, the main move here is c3, trying to build up a big center. c3 followed by d4. I go with that plan later. Um, knight c3, just developing a knight is good here, and bishop c4, just normal developing moves are your top choices. So I played the rare move d3 with the idea of uh, if he captures a pawn, I can take back with the bishop and uh, just have a nice edge. The problem is, of course, he's not forced to take the pawn. We're out of the opening book here, so let's just look at this tab. Um, instead of taking, which is what he played in the game, he should probably just uh, develop a piece like uh, knight f6 is a chess engine recommendation. And um, I would probably continue with my development, bishop e2, preparing to castle. And uh, you can see that uh, the engine likes black here. I can't really castle right away because uh, this bishop is uh, covering the square <coughs> so that the king would land on. So that's not a, not a safe time to castle. I have to uh, block that somehow with perhaps a c3 and d4. So that's why... The C3, D4 idea is, is probably better a better plan than the way I played it. Uh, but my opponent helped me out here by uh, taking the pawn, and now I take back. And uh, he's still preventing me from castling for the moment, but I can I can fix that. So he, he continues developing bishop e6. I go bishop e2. And then he moves the bishop again. You know, if the bishop went to uh, e6... You should leave it there for a while and develop some other pieces. He moves it again immediately to g4, so he's wasted a, a tempo. He took two moves to get to the square where he could have gone in one move. And um, so now I have a, a very comfortable position. I can build up with c3, d4. He decides to trade, which also helps a little bit. It gives me the bishop pair. And then uh, he develops his knight to d7. Okay. And I get to kick the bishop with d4. Bishop drops back. And I castle. <clears throat> and now he played c6, and I should have uh, spotted this one right away. c6 just leaves a pawn loose there, so <laughs> I wasn't uh, wasn't completely on top of things this game. But uh, I wanted to get off of this diagonal, so I went ahead and played a move I had already planned ahead of time. Actually, that illustrates one of the dangers of uh, blitz chess, is you tend to plan out your moves ahead of time because you don't have so much time to move, and then you play them automatically. And really, each move you should stop and say, uh, okay, what did my opponent weaken with his last move, and how can I take advantage of it before playing the move that you already planned to play? <laughs> okay, so knight df6. Knight df6, okay. And uh, now the pawn is defended. But you can see, uh, even though the material is even and everything is defended, uh, the engine is giving a strong advantage to white. This is just based on uh, the bishop pair, the two uh, pawns in the center, and uh, just a better development. I have two pieces out, plus I've castled, and uh, he's got uh, to move the knight out of the way or the queen out of the way before uh, he can castle. So 
just a positional edge here, better better development, better control of the center. Um, he goes knight d2. Is that right? No, I go knight d2. It's my turn. <laughs> I was wondering. Okay. And he goes knight e7. This is logical, just developing. And queen e2, just getting my pieces organized. I'm hoping to push through on the e-file here and open up against his king. One thing he really needs to do at some point is castle. And, and right now would be a good point. You can see it's a second choice of the engine. The engine says bishop c7 or castling are its top two choices. Instead, he embarks on an adventure on the king's side with this pawn push. And um, I respond in the right way. I, sometimes uh, when you're attacked on the uh, wing, you can respond with a push in the center. That's often the strongest way to respond because ultimately the center is more important than the wing as long as um, you have to deal with any immediate threats. I mean, as long as he's not directly winning here, then generally a, a push in the center is, is stronger. So he took, um, looks like maybe taking back with a pawn is a little better, but bishop takes is still good. And knight f to d5, he's played here, okay? And... Um, Bishop takes d5 is what I played. Bishop takes g7 is the recommendation. Yeah, I, I noticed this move. I wasn't sure um, if uh, rook to g8 might get him some counterplay on the uh, g file. So I just uh, left that and I took off his uh, knight here. And uh, he took back with the queen. That's the right way to take, getting his piece active and maybe preparing to castle uh, queen side here. And I bring a rook to the center. Once again, the engine's thinking I should take on g7. Um, so right now, he really needs to castle. I've got all my pieces <laughs> lined up on the center here. And uh, he really needs to get his king out of the center before things fall apart. But instead, he played the move f6. And already, I could take advantage of the situation. I could just uh, take that pawn on f6. Um, there's no time to recapture my bishop because there's a mate threat on uh, e7. So he's really got to deal with that. Um, I didn't spot that. I just dropped my bishop back. And then he noticed his, uh, there is a problem right now where I'm threatening checkmate immediately. And uh, he defended. And so uh, I started bringing my knight in to add a little more force to the attack, get all my pieces involved. Um, knight e4 is recommended. I went to f3. So not, not the best move here. And now he could castle. I guess that's uh, an option. Once he's supported the uh, bishop, castling is good. So knight e4. Um, let's check out why that's so much stronger. Knight e4. And if he castles here, then c4 hitting the queen. Well, it's not immediately obvious. Queen takes d4 and then rook, rook to d1. <clears throat> queen to b6. Yeah, it's not immediately obvious why uh, the knight on e4. It's, it is more centralized here. I guess the knight from f3 doesn't have many good squares to go to because he's controlling these squares, whereas uh, the knight from e4 can hop into a square over here. Okay, just curious about that one. I mean, that's, that's a big difference. Uh, evaluation after knight f3 is uh, plus 1, and after knight e4 it's uh, plus 3, so that's a uh, it's a pretty significant difference. It's uh, curious that it's not immediately tactical in nature. It doesn't, doesn't immediately win material. Okay, he goes g5, and um, I should go c4 here. That was part of my idea of knight f3 was uh, to defend this pawn so I can play c4. Um, but I had a different idea. I noticed that, um, well, I can actually place a bishop on c7. That's also one of the engine choices here. Um, just attacking his bishop, and he can't take it because of the mate threat once again. So he brings his queen back to defend, and now I take the bishop off. So I've gotten rid of one of the defenders around his king, and um, I come forward with queen to e4. Knight takes g5 is already playable here. It's interesting, but queen to e4, threatening uh, queen to g6. And I thought he really needed to do something about that threat, although it's... Uh, difficult. Uh, the engine is recommending rook h6 as a way to guard that. I thought uh, he could push his pawn to f5. Let's check this out. New variation, f5. The queen goes to e5. Yeah, hitting the rook. Um, he can castle here. But if he castles, he loses the uh, knight. So if he moves the uh, rook, then what's my killer threat? 
queen to f6. Yeah, maintaining pressure on the knight and threatening to come in with uh, with my knight. And the knight can now jump into this square or this square. So uh, looks like this is a position that can't really be defended either. So uh, he's in big trouble here. He tried to move rook to f8. And I just play queen g6 with check. And rook to f7 blocking the check is the only move, only legal move. And now knight takes g5. Yeah, the engine liked that one too. So he resigned at this point. I was curious if there was any defense, but you can look at the numbers and it's, uh, you know, he's going to lose at least the, the rook here because it can't, um, it can't move. It's pinned and it's under attack by the knight. He can't take the knight because of uh, queen takes rook. So that all these pins operating here have got him uh, completely tied up. And uh, so the game finished. So the moral of this one was, uh, well, <laughs> he, did, he did a couple things wrong. The first one was uh, he helped my development by taking on f4. And then the second one was, the second major mistake was he didn't uh, castle when he had the chance. And uh, he got into a big trouble. So uh, anyway, this is, this is how the game ended. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave me any comments you have in the section below. And I will see you again soon. Bye.